We but, should uh, be live on Facebook. We're bringing everybody into the room. We're going to be discussing uh, best producer catalogs of music. Um, I mean, we just put a poll out there, Kanye West and DJ Premier, and it's like 51%. To 49 percent so we're going to give everybody a chance to actually get in the room so we can go ahead and talk this subject up what's going on with you Coop? peace and blessings happy sunday to everybody happy sunday, sunday yeah. edition and yeah, sunday morning edition <laughs> sunday morning edition for real man yo it's yeah. uh it's crazy man i got my coffee cup and everything you know what i'm saying yeah. and um yes I'm let's, on the of water. <laughs> let's talk about this man welcoming everybody into the room we're gonna be talking about dj Premier. Uh, versus Kanye West, and we're going to be talking about, what is it, the top five uh, hip-hop producers ever, just based on the catalog of music? Yeah. All right, well, the poll that we put out there, we asked who had to, who is the better producer, Kanye West or DJ Premier, and a lot of people felt like it was mad disrespectful to even put the two up against each other, and right now, Kanye West is winning at a 51% rate to 49%. What do you think about the fact that Kanye is actually beating DJ Premier right now in this discussion? I think uh, some of that is time-driven, because <clears throat> Kanye is currently just... when you. I told you, Mike, when you Google Kanye, it doesn't even bring up, like, his music. Well, like, that's frightening. So I like mean, like yeah. he's just ingrained he, he he he's ingrained in culture in a way that very few hip hop artists or producers have ever been, and so there is some sway in that. But if we just want to keep it to the music, uh, for the Preem fans, they need to understand it's more frighteningly close than they realize. Who you got like, between the two? You got uh, Premier or Kanye? I got Preem uh, barely though. Okay, what so, what makes you so, edge preem out over uh, Kanye? I mean, specifically, Mike, it's all of the classic songs that he's done that are on classic albums. It's a tipping point kind of thing because he not only has his classic stuff with his group, Gangstar, with mm -hmm. Guru, but he has been a contributor to so many other hip-hop classic albums more so than any other producer, including Dre, hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, he's contributed to a, to a lot of albums that, that, that are classic. And if we're talking, I mean, and if we want to talk about, like, relevancy, I know he may not move the meter the way Kanye does, but keep in mind, we're talking about somebody that started making beats, like, you know, as far as getting production credits around 1988. And... Armani Caesar, who's a new artist, just dropped her project last year, which mm -hmm. to rave reviews. And I believe the first single was produced by DJ Premier. Yeah. So there's something to be said for the longevity. Um, and also, too, Mike, and here's something that I realized about Preem when you go to, through his catalog. Preem has almost worked as a producer the way Wayne has worked as an MP. He's a freelance, well, I will not say it like that, but you know what I mean? Like, he offers his services out to other, you know, people's projects. Oh. This is the way I kind of looked at what Preem was doing, or has done. I think Preem goes to, let's just say, like, Biggie's Ready to Die, right? Like, Ready to Die already had a culture. It had a sound, everything. It's like, okay, well, you need a DJ premiere track. So he goes to said individuals and gets them that DJ premiere track, kind of like So Ghetto on uh, Volume 3, right? And, or like even shit, Nas is like on I Am. But see, with Kanye, I feel like when Kanye comes to the party outside of the period where he did like the sped up soul samples, he actually takes the artist and produces them. I can't really think of a time when DJ Premier took a situation like when when Kanye took on Common and made B. Go ahead. What's up? What you, you got? Something else to add? Go ahead. No, no, no. Okay. So here's what I had. Part of the reason why I put Preem above Kanye is because Mike, outside of B and Daytona, Kanye really has an executive produce somebody other than himself to classic results. I feel like Kanye obviously is the groundwork for the blueprint. Um, I'm glad you brought that up because here's another reason why I knocked him. You say he's the groundwork for the blueprint, but he only produced four songs. 
Only four songs on the Blueprint. Uh, 13 of, track album, right? Yeah, 13, 13 track album. Um, it was pretty much what him and just Bink did like Bink two. Did two. He did Bink, two. Bink did Eminem two. did one. Uh, did just one. did probably some of the stronger records on there. I think. Well, I think you don't know is probably the strongest beat on uh, the blueprint, and I would say "Heart of the City" is probably number two. Um, but and that's and that's and hold, hold on. So these are the ones he did. He did "Take Over," "Heart of the City," right. "Never Change," and he did the girls part two that's on the uh, the, the bonus, bonus stuff, track, the bonus stuff. Yeah. yeah, which a lot of people prefer. Actually, a lot of people yeah. prefer the bonus. I yeah. mean, it's dope. I don't. I don't. I think it's dope. I think the beat's better, but I don't prefer like the bars and how Jay how Jay put together the original girls was more clever to me. Well, um, Kanye being an executive producer is kind of like what the Blueprint Three is like, right? Or like Watch the Throne. Like no, see t- that's yeah. what I mean. He's done stuff like Watch the Throne and the Blueprint Three. Yeah, he executive produced those projects. Watch the Throne is good. The Blueprint Three is great. Neither one of them is a classic, though. You don't think the uh, Watch the Throne's a classic? Many people think it's no. A classic. I mean, the Blueprint Three is better than Watch the Throne, like easily mm. to me. I think yeah. they're very, very, very similar. Oh my! I would say I'm not sure. I, I, I don't think we. I don't think so. Like I mean, even, like Run This Town, uh, Real as It Gets, it got uh, hits Venus on versus it. Mars, Already Home, uh, On to the Next. Thank you. What we talking? I don't know, Mike. Empire State of Mind. I don't know if you said Empire that. Empire State of yeah. Mind. DOA. No. Yeah, the yeah, Blueprint DOA, 3 is Mike, strong. Mike, I was impressed by Jay on that album. I, I mean, just for me personally, that's his best album in the last 10 years to me. Uh, Sola says, uh, what was Primo doing with Guru then? Uh, <laughs> James well, Knight well, says, well, the I, original Girls, Girls, Girls is better. Courtney said, me, run this town me. because it was dope because of Rihanna. Um, all right, let me so, ask you this. On. Let me ask so, you this. So, how many classics does Gangstar have? How many classic albums actually, does Gangstar have? I was have? actually going to get into that, Mike. Okay. Uh, I believe Step Into the Arena is a borderline classic. Moment of Truth is a definite classic. Like, certified. Moment of Truth is the one, I would say. Moment of Truth is yeah. phenomenal, Mike. So, it's the best so produced so DJ premiere album I've ever heard. Period. Period, Mike, it's one of the best hip-hop produced albums ever if we're talking about production and song sequence and actually quality of beats. It's it's a gem. It's a gem. It is a uh, it, it is executive produced to the caliber of some of Dr. Dre's best work. Well, you can't discount Kanye's work that he did for himself if you want to talk about that. I mean, because they are well, well, albums. I, I, the College oh, Dropout is an album. Late Registration's an album. Graduation's an album. And so is My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. So, Mike, I have all of those written down. Do you want okay. me to start with Prem's catalog or Kanye? Catalog? Go ahead. Start with Premier's catalog. Why we okay, got everybody in here? Okay, so let's in go here. into Prem. I went the classics with the group, okay. obviously, because unlike Kanye, Primo actually got to produce for a group. And I'm going to tell you this: being the producer for a group like helps most people. And most of the people who made my top 10 and in the top five produced for group. So just Kanye okay. being in the conversation is a feat unto itself about how quality his solo work is. Okay. So so I just want to say that. So Gangstar has Step Into the Arena and Moment of Truth. Okay. So those are two classics that he personally executive produced. And keep in mind, he doesn't rap like Kanye does. So he's cultivating tracks for somebody else. Right. So I find the degree of difficulty of that to be higher. I That's agree with actually... That. And actually, that's the reason why the guy who's at number two ahead of Preem, who I usually thought Preem was better than, ended at number two. A lot of it had to do with the artists they made tracks for. Mm-hmm. So let's go to some notable uh, singles released by gang stars. Not just tracks, but singles. Mm-hmm. Just to Get a Rep, Dwick, Mass Appeal, You Know My Steez, Royalty, Work. Those are all classic hip-hop singles that Primo produced for his group. Okay? Okay. Now, let's go to <laughs> classic hip-hop singles that he's produced for artists that have been released as singles, Mike. Uh-huh. This is some of a who's who in hip-hop. Mike, the lead single to like Water for Chocolate, even though Dilla did most of the beats. It's no, The Sixth Sense produced by I think by The who? Sixth Sense is incredible. I think that's one it of uh, that's actually one of my favorite premiere tracks, personally. It is. Yeah. Mike, 
So you want to talk about versatility, maybe not in beats, but in the artist. How many female artists have let off their album, I mean, their single with the primo track, simply done by Armani Caesar? And that's relevancy, too. Mm. But let's go to some of the classic stuff, Mike. Okay. Specifically, KRS-One, Rakim, okay. Nas, Royce the 5'9". MCs act like they don't know. Rappers are in danger. Okay. For Rakim, it's been a long time, and when I be on the mic, these are all singles, Mike. These got released as singles. Okay. Mike, the lead single to I Am, which is, I believe, Nas's biggest selling album, is what? Nas is like DJ Premier, first mm-hmm. single. Okay. Royce the 5'9", Royce the boom. Okay. Mike, I didn't even touch any of the prime stuff. Let's go to just some classic gangstar stuff that's not singles. Okay. Uh, nothing less, Above the Clouds. Mike, let's go to J. Rue to Damage to Come Clean. Let's go to Return of the Crooklyn Dodgers. Mike, let's go to the Notorious B.I.G. Unbelievable, Unbelievable. Kick in the Door, 10 Crack Commandments. Mike, I'm not naming regular tracks. Every track that I've named so far is pretty much a classic with the exception of Simply Done by Armani Caesar. These aren't just singles. These aren't just tracks. These are all hip-hop classics. Mike, we still haven't got to... Remember the So What's Up that was the B-side to You Know My Steve? Mm-hmm. Mike, let's go to the J stuff, Mike. So Ghetto, okay. Bring It On, Friend or Foe. Friend or foe 98, yep. a million one questions, rhyme no more. Mike, let's get to the Nas shit, the, <laughs> which is pretty much what gave him his name. Right. New York State of Mind, one and two. Memory mm-hmm. Lane, represent. I gave you power. Come and get me. He did the best song off Juvenile Hell for my beat, Peer Pressure. That, yeah. My KRF1, turn of the boom back. I'm a blunt getting smoked. I can't wake up. DJ Premier. Mike, what's Jay's best primo record? The Evils. Mike, yep. on the 18th letter by Rakim, most people think <laughs> the best track on there is New York. That's the track that DJ Premier did. And Mike, we're just talking about the big boy stuff. Mm-hmm. So not only does he have the big boy stuff to go right there with Kanye and classic material, but here's what's key. And I said it earlier. Preem done work comparable to how Wayne has worked production-wise. He's done stuff for everybody. Mike, his best produced album might not even be Moment of Truth. It might be Living Proof by Group Home. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, in the chat, we got people helping you out, too. We got JFK to LAX. You got The Format by uh, AZ. I'm just giving people stuff. Yeah, there's yeah. more. Yeah, there's you know more. And, and feel free just, to say Mike, whatever you got to say in the chat room hey, if Mike, you want to add to Mike, the I list. I want to say this. All these tracks that I'm naming, I was able to name off the top of my head because they're hip-hop classics, Mike. I didn't have to go Google or search nothing. Right. I knew these rappers... Because these records are important to these albums. A lot of these albums are classics. Mike, he's contributed to at least, importantly, to two of the ten greatest rap albums ever in Illmatic and Life After Death. Okay. Like, like Life After Death and Illmatic are not the same without DJ Premier. Like, it's not the same without Ten Crack Commandments and Kicking the Door. It's not the same without New York State of Mind and Memory Lane and Represent. Now, you know, we always get the... Uh... Kanye, Kanye hasn't contributed to a top ten all-time rap album. Okay, well, let me go down some of Kanye's singles, just to be fair, and then I'm going to go into what I was, just I was about to say. I was going to do it, but yeah, but we can go into it because okay. uh, Ye is well, here you got, because you got the truth. You got the truth by Benny Siegel, right? You got Izzo. I got that. I got that. Yep. You got Izzo by Jay. You got Guess Who's yep. Back by Scarface. Yep. You got Get got by, uh, by Talib Kweli. You got yep. uh, Lucifer with Jay. You know, yep. Through the Wire, his Check. own stuff. And if we want to jump out of here, you know what I'm saying, you can say Alicia Keys, You Don't Know My Name. Not the no, mentions. no, Mike. We're keeping the R and B out. We're keeping, we keeping the R and B out. out? Okay. Say that about Drake. Hold on, because Preem did tracks for Christina Aguilera. And no shits uh, was trash. And no shits was trash. And when he played it in the verses, we figured out how trash they were. That's. I mean, I ain't gonna knock it, Mike. You don't know my <laughs> name is better than everything that uh, Preem did. For <laughs> everything. Christina everything. 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 So Mike. I'll skip hey, the Janet Jackson. Hey, shit. Mike, you, you don't. You don't. You don't know my name is actually one of Kanye's best beats. I just kept it on some rap shit because I thought about yeah. some of the stuff that uh, Dre did for other people too that wasn't hip hop related too. Because Kanye did a lot of that Brandy album too um, around that time period that. too. Um, no, you know, no, not to me, mention slow me, jams with Twisted. And, with... And, oh, hold uh, on, let me, go ahead. No, I want to give Ye some flowers about some records that he's produced that people don't remember. And this is what mm-hmm. I mean about how it might be closer than people realize if you're a Prem fan. Like, I'm leaning on Prem, and, and it's because of those records I just listed. But let's not like act like Kanye ain't got like some shit. And I'm not just talking singles, but let me finish some of the singles, Mike. Let's not forget Birthday Song with Two Chains. 
Well, Mike. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I was still going, man. I was going to say slow oh, go jams. Ahead. Go. I'm slow sorry. jams go. with Twister. You know what I'm saying? You got that. You got Selfish, Slum Village. So at this point, we talking about, because I, I do feel like this is one thing that Kanye was huge for. Kanye was the one that actually bridged that gap between the backpackers and the mainstream rappers. And you got somebody who's out here doing uh, production big songs for Talib Kweli, uh, doing big songs for Slum Village, and doing big songs for Jay uh, Twister, bringing Jamie Foxx back to the music like that, too. Uh, Ludacris with Stand Up. I mean, the versatility is all over the place with, with Kanye. Scarface. And because, you know, one could say, you know how you always get the knock of the East Coast bias. DJ Premier stuff is just on one side of the map. I covered everything. You got Kanye over here with Slum Village in Detroit. You got uh, Scarface in Houston. Made a classic for him. You got uh, Chicago with Twister, Common. You know what I'm saying? He making stuff with Jay. Ludacris in Atlanta. He's making stuff with Trina. He may be all right with Trina and Luda. She's Mike, in Miami. I got, hold on, stop for a second, Mike. Your official head, I got be all right down with the star, has actually one of Kanye's best beats, and people act like he didn't make that record. I think that's one of his 10 best beats, actually. And then we go to the West Coast. You got Dreams with the game. The no, song Mike, that actually I made got the all, documentary happen. Mike, every song that you uh, uh, said... I have written down. I'm going to give you a few more. Uh, mm -hmm. Swagger Like Us. He did In Cold Blood on Scarface's The Fix. That's actually yeah. the track that precedes um, Guess Who's Back Guess on who's the back, album. Yeah. He produced that too. Mike, he produced Papa Was a Player off the Lost Tapes. Yeah. He Brooklyn, produced we the go drink hard. Off of the oh, yeah. But, uh, Let the Beat Build, Mike. He co produced that. New God yeah. Flow, King Push, Numbers on the Board, Click. Run this town comfortable with uh, Lil Wayne. Yeah. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde. No. Like I said. Wasn't a big he, fan of the Bonnie and Clyde thing. That was just, I don't even know what he did on that. But <laughs> the 03 Bonnie and Clyde, that was just recycled. But I will give him Otis and stuff like that. Yeah, he did Otis too. So here's yeah. what I'm saying Kanye is there because of the versatility. But Mike, the tracks that you named. For Kanye, they're not as great as the Prem tracks, and that's just it at the end of the day. I think they're the not. tracks you name, you were naming the swagger Mike, like us Mike, stuff. Hold on, Mike. Dreams is going. incredible. Mike, Mike, you want to know what? How about this, Mike? You wanted to bring up You Don't Know My Name, Devil's Pie. <laughs> Done. Mike. I got You on, Don't Know My Name. Mike, Mike, that's no, close. No, no, Mike, that's I'll close. let you slide a little bit. We're going to go a little further. Mike, Mathematic, Post Def, Platinum Plus, Big Daddy Kane, and Big L. The re recognize off the locks album, mm -hmm. like so. What you're saying about the whole New York thing is right, and I'm not it's knocking that. Region. None of y'all. Hold on, hold on, Mike. Mike, ooh, I got one for you. Everything that I am off graduation is produced by who? DJ Premier. Even Ye went to primo to get a beat. Yeah, I mean that's what Ye yeah. does, so, you know. So, so, <laughs> so what I'm saying is, Mike, Sean versus Flair off of Pray for Paris. Primo's been part of so many classics. I just named Kanye's classic. I just named West Side Gun's classic. And so it may be regionalized to the sense. It doesn't take away the gravity of the greatness of the work. Mike, because, until, cause, because most of Dr. Dre's great catalog is all West Coast based. We don't ever say bias when we're talking about Dre. So you can't talk bias about Prem. Hmm, but see, Dre made full albums, and it was more general. Huh. All right, hold on. Hold on. We, so we go, let me go to some of Mike, the comments real quick. Get Richard, Die Trying, Mike. What's his classic that's not a West Coast classic other than Get Richard, Die Trying? Listen, and Mike, it could be argued. Mind, and let's keep in mind, he only did five tracks for Get Richard, Die Trying, and 50 had some of that album in the can before he came to After Oh, no, 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 you're right, you're right. I mean, look, between if we're talking about Dre and Premier. I just think Dre produced many men, and many I, men might be the best track on there. I just think Dr. Dre's production sounds better than Premier's to me. So if we're it talking about them too, yeah, so, it sounds yeah, better than everybody's, Mike. Yeah, sounds better than everybody. Yeah, so that's where <laughs> that is. But all right, so let me go to the chat real quick. Solo says, "I think it's clear that yeah, uh, the yay is sonically more diverse, but I think that, but I think that necessarily makes yay a better." Producer, per se, the argument is similar comparing rappers like Tupac to Jadakus. What makes them a great rapper? 
Um, yeah, I guess I get what you're saying. It's like it's about the the techniques and all of that, but I don't know. I wish that Premier would have been able to prove that he could make uh, Mike, a diverse oh, amount of production for different artists. Because for me, I feel like okay. being a great producer. Listen, I think being a great producer is about <clears throat> being able to take an array of talent and making greatness with them. Now, I will give you this with that whole Dr. Dre argument. One thing about Dr. Dre is he works with new artists. We have rarely seen Dre take somebody who's established, who already has their, uh, th they're already set in their ways, and make something great for them. That's why he wasn't able no. to put out anything on Rock Him. That's why, you know, when Eve that's came why back, it never happened. isn't that great. Exactly. So, yes, that's the knock on him. And so with Kanye West, we've seen Kanye be able to do all of uh -oh. these things. Let's, I mean, okay, but let's let, let's break things, things some downs into a simple format. Like, we talk about being for the culture all the time. What I'm saying when I'm talking about Primo's work is that part of why I'm giving him the edge over Kanye is that Primo is for the culture in a way that Kanye isn't. So give me a minute and let me point it out to you. Explain that, please. I, no, I'm about to. I can <laughs> name these big titans of artists that he's worked with, like the legends, the big, the Nas, mm -hmm. the J, and all that. Prem gives the same type of love to cats who aren't like that. That's why I bought up Living Proof by Group Home. Yeah. To most people, to most people, Group Home aren't even B level MCs. That's some of Prem's best work. No, Go I love OC that too. Mike Mike, even OC, like what I'm saying is, is that Prem is a real producer for the culture in terms of like, if Prem makes some heat, he going to give heat to whoever. You don't think Kanye, Kanye does that either? No, no You don't he think doesn't. he did that with no, 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 Daytona? Mike, Mike, this is what I'm trying to tell you. If you actually go look at most of Kanye's classic shit, he either kept it for himself or he gave it the comment on B. Consequence got <laughs> some heat. Consequence got some heat. Hold on, Mike. GLC Mike, I mean, got some heat. Common. Hold on. They all. How about this? If you weren't from Chi Town before two, 20, 2010, Mike, you didn't get nothing from Ye. Unless you was from Rockefeller or Chi Town, you didn't get no heat from Ye. That's what I'm saying. He kind of he did that on purpose, Mike. And so the versatility is there, but he kind of hurt himself with that. Anybody can go get a preem track. Couldn't if you're from New York, if you're from New uh, York, if you're outside of the New York uh, walls, you're not getting a preem track. He's done work with Snoop. Hmm? I don't even know. He's what done that three is. Snoop tracks. I, I've, was on, he, I've never heard the, it. the Snoop track on uh, the Snoop track on uh, JD's album fourteen seventy two. That's a primo track, Mike. Yes, so he Life worked in 1472, with, so he that's worked Primo. Yeah. That song wasn't that good. I know what song you're talking about. No, it had a bunch of people on it. West Coast artists, and I just bought up a 20-year-old album with him working with a West Coast artist. That so was a just... long, long time ago, <laughs> obviously. But yeah, it, it, you're right. No, but, but it's just at the end of the day, and here's how I just played it. Like They both have two classics that they've executive produced where they weren't the rapper. Now, here's what I'll tell you. Daytona and B are better than step into the arena in moment of truth. Okay? Mm -hmm. But Kanye's songs aren't better than Primo's song, and Primo's done more work. Primo's classics are more legendary. They just are, Mike. I think like, that depends like, on who you ask, like, Mike, Mike, you, you gonna remember Otis the way you remember the Ten Crack Commandments? Hell no, Mike. But I Hell remember no. Heart of the City the way I remember the Ten Crack Commandments. I'm just saying. Um, you, you're Mike, picking and choosing thing, records. Mike, you know what I'm saying? Mike, how, about like, this, how about this? How about this? Kanye, I mean, Cream got like 10, 10 crack commandments, though. Ye's classics ain't like that when it comes to back? giving stuff to other people. Guess Who's Back is not a better beat than any of T Primo's 10 best beats. It's not, Mike. No. Like, you tripping now. Like, you think you think it's <laughs> messing with Above the Clouds, Mike? Is it messing with Above the Clouds or Come Clean? I would rather listen to Guess Who's Back than Above the Clouds. Yes. You're bugging, Mike. I above would. the Clouds, in some people's mind, is one of Primo's five best beats. You're totally wrong. You're I totally mean, wrong, shit, you, Mike. I mean, you know, another record, oh, if we talk about bugging, Inspect the no. Deck again... Mike, Another I need record. To speak up and tell Mike that he's bugging. So I don't. Well, let, to let me go to the, the clouds, chat real quick. Above the clouds and guess who's back is not in the same stratosphere, Mike. What, who y'all got? Like above this. the clouds and guess who's back? Let me go to the chat real quick. Put that up, it Mike. Said, a million one questions rhyme no more. 
Like, All right, let me, let me go That's to the chat real, real. Back. Both, Mike, <laughs> both of those beats are better than Guess Who's Back. <laughs> Hold on real quick. Let me go to the chat, Coop. Oh. Uh, you got uh, Soul says you can't use the whole argument. He said you can't use the whole album argument and then claim Andre 3000 qualifies as the top three rapper of all time. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Sean Johnson says, uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did keep the good beats for himself. James Knight says he did one of uh, Snoop's one on Snoop's album to pay the cost of the Be Boss album. Yeah, um, yeah, one and only is a Snoop premiere track. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they've yeah, done yeah. like three records together all together, I believe. They're not memorable. Him... Let's just be honest. I mean, they're not memorable. No, no, no. I didn't say they were memorable, but mm -hmm. he's done the work. That's what I mean. Anybody can get a primo track. It doesn't. When you look at when you look at Ye's discography, it's like it's all Rockefeller and Chi Town. Is it literally? To... Yeah, mostly. Is it? Like, I mean, other, it's, that, that's... it's a track. It's a track. My, it's a track here or there, like "Be All Right" or Stand you know up. what I'm saying or stand like here or there he'll give you something primo be giving cats like whatever what like, about get by that's live. what i mean mike here here and there mike you can pull it up it's not even like as far as making beats i don't know if there's a major label or, or a major producer that's even put in the work this preem put in like get and, by I, is I better than this. 10 crack commandments by the way no it's not mike it is, it is. no it's not it's not bad come clean it's not better than unbelievable. That's what I'm saying, Mike. Uh, anytime you want to go somewhere with one of Kanye's best beats, I can give you three, four, or five primo beats. You can't do that with Ye. Every time you turn a corner, I got something for you, Mike. I think Dreams. Mike, The Evils. The Evils is better than Dreams. The Evils is better than going, Dreams? Mike? No, it's not. I think the song yes, is. is better because it's Jay. But the beat, no, the if, I, was, if, better if beat I listen to dreams. both beats, I'm probably going to pick better. the Dreams beat. Oh, Mike, it's better. I'm probably memory lane. Nas is like Mike. Like it's too much, Mike. It's too much. Six cents. It's too much, Mike. The documentary too by the game. He don't work with West Coast artists. What about the documentary too? Let me ask I think you that this. Beats, I think that beats better than Dreams it's too. It's not. No, that's it not. is. Let me ask that's you one this, of the best beats. That to be honest with you, before he did Simply Done, I thought that was the last classic track he actually gave somebody was the documentary two beat. Because Premier has been producing the whole prime albums right yeah all right and so prime prime two are any of them better produced than daytona because i mean that's what kanye produced the whole thing of that no but it's also only seven tracks too you know what i'm saying uh, are we gonna do like, that to daytona now no, no. hey mike no 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 i'm consistent i'm consistent i told you that i found conway's performance more impressive on from a king to a god than daytona and why did i say I said because he did it for longer, almost double the time. Wouldn't get far by game. Thanks, uh, no, I got, Sharif. I, I, I got, uh, I got Picasso. wouldn't get far written down. Okay. No, wouldn't he's get done far. work, Mike. Now, now we, I, I let, let's talk about whole you albums. The truth about Beanie Siegel. Let's talk about whole let's, albums because uh, I guess we got Moment of Truth is the one classic that Premier just produced the whole thing. You got to put I group mean, home in that? Oh, I mean, if we're talking just production-wise, Group Homes Living Proof is like, yeah, easy. That's easy. Okay, so... Like, how about this? Production-wise, Moment of Truth and uh, Living Proof stack up very well, if not better, beat-wise, to Daytona and B. So, Kanye West produced the whole My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. That's uh, his solo stuff. That's what I mean. He kept the best shit for himself. But I'm just saying, like Mike, how about this? The RZA, the RZA could have had Kanye's career had he done that. Again, we're talking about produced albums. It doesn't matter that he produced it for himself. No, Mike, and I got him down. Hold on, Mike. Actually, okay, that's so more impressive. Understand this. Let's understand this. I got Kanye at number four. The, the number two reasons I have, the two main reasons I have him at number four is because he has produced six classic albums four of them belong to him yeah what's the wrong other, with that the other two no no no. Let, let, let me finish the other two are daytona and b no other producer has stepped into the artist in the rapper realm like mm -hmm. him so i'm gonna take him down some notches like that because he's given himself more opportunities he's not giving this heat to other people why does the way he get somebody... bought it for being a good artist and a great producer at the same time. No, I'm not knocking him for being a good artist, but it's like I look at your production catalog and you're the rapper on it. It's like, okay, you gave yourself all the heat. That's not really producer shit. That's rapper shit. We already knocked him as
as a rapper for being a producer. Now we're gonna knock him as a producer for being a rapper. Who yeah, he's getting knocked? Be he's getting knocked because yeah. he's great at both. He's getting knocked no, he on is, both no, lists no, because he he's is, great at he both. He is great at both, but how fair is that when we're talking about the catalog to other guys like Mike? Like I said, how about this beat for beat? How about this Mike? Beat his fault, for he beat, great. Mike <laughs> beat for beat. Like beat for beat and bar for bar, lyrically, he's not better than the RZA. The RZA could have did what he did and be a way bigger star than he was. He chose to be a producer. I'm trying to stress to you that even though Kanye started off as a producer, he made a choice to be more of an artist and a rapper than a producer. He really doesn't produce to high levels unless he has some sort of stake in it, which means his shit or somebody that signed to him, Pusha T, or somebody from his hometown he looks up to, Common. He actually, you can get anybody. Anybody can get a beat from Prem. Because they again, sound the same. Because people are getting Prem beats. Kanye actually goes out there and gets an artist and says, you know what? I'm going to go out here and actually work with this artist. Like on some Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis shit. Like, let me go get Janet, and we're going to actually... Uh, get to know Janet and make an album around this. Like, Premier has never done what Kanye did with Common on B, where it was like, he's coming off of Electric Circus. He pulls this man in. It's like, you know what? We're going to put together a Common record that is important to you, important to Chicago, and this is going to be a comeback record. And they actually did that as a unit. Premier doesn't do that. Premier gives you Premier beats. Like, okay, you want a Premier beat? It's like, all right, well, this is my signature sound. Boom, rhyme on it. Like, boom was for Royce. You think he so, really worked with Royce on that? He sent him a beat. <clears throat> and RZA I mean, couldn't have been Kanye. I agree with Jay here. He said RZA could be Kanye. I don't know about that. And, yeah, let's not act like <laughs> Prince Raheem. Let's been. not act like Prince Raheem didn't happen. He was trying to be a solo artist, trying to be the Fresh Prince. It didn't work out like that. The other guys were just better. I don't want to say better MCs, but well, they were better just... better MCs. That's how it happened. That's what I'm saying. Hey, it Kanye is what had it some is. better. How about this? Look at it like this, Mike. Look at who he gives tracks to, really. He only really gives tracks to guys that are better MCs than him. That's some funny acting ass shit to be saying that he's better than somebody that anybody can go get a beat from and make a hip hop classic. And you make the point for me. Listen to the cats that he will executive produce for Jay Z, Pusher T, and Common. Oh, well, they're better than you as an MC. You better be giving them a beat instead of trying to rap over it, nigga. Like, stop giving this nigga credit for doing... No, stop giving that nigga credit for doing what she's supposed to do as a producer. They rap better than you. You should probably give them the beat. You ever Hello? heard Good, Bad, to Ugly by Consequence? I have. There's some great beats Is on he? there. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and, and where's Consequence from, Mike? Consequence from New York. Where? That's Q-Tip's Mike. cousin. That's Tip's cousin, right. That He's is from Tip's Queens. Cousin, but how's Consequence is from Queens. <laughs> Right, but who we really been riding with? Oh, come on, How man. We <laughs> He's from Queens. Come on, Mike. You already know, like, I mean, come on, Mike. You he know, gave that's what Tyler I'm saying. Like, he gave Tyler like, from he Cincinnati when slash it's Brooklyn. To him. It was beneficial to him. That's what I'm trying to tell you. How Every was it beneficial to him? About, what, hold on, who was Consequence signed to? Who was Consequence? I don't know. Good question. Good music. That's the good, Eventually. That's where good music started. No, that's where it started, Mike. I was going to say, Consequence he started was, his, yeah. That was one of those I'm going to put my homeboys on type thing because Consequence was he, rocking with him early. He started his label with him. What you mean? Right, like, right. What you mean? I was going to say, there was no to. good music before Consequence. So yeah. So you talking about who was he signed to, Mike? What you talking about? He was nah, signed to he Ye. he was signed that's to nobody he got, until. He no. was signed to Ye. He was signed to Ye. That's why Ye gave him the heat. It was beneficial. Who was Consequence signed to in those days when he was rocking with Tribe and when he was in that cypher with um, Noriega and uh, 50 Cent, like in 98? He had to have a deal or something. I think Maybe Consequence the- had a deal before Good Music, honestly. I think he did, but I mean, that's we'd have to. I'd have to go dig on that. It's been a minute since we talked about Consequence. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying that there's no vested interest on that level a consequence like that. You had like he was from Chicago or something. Like he came no. through 
Kanye came through not, and revitalized Twister. He didn't only I, just I revitalize mean, Common. Like, and you know I'm what? Not, I'm oh. not knocking Kanye's catalog. I'm trying to express to you it's not as extensive and as classic as y'all think outside of his catalog. Daytona and B. Almost all the heat is right there. We named the, re- the rest of the heat, Mike, and that heat that we named, it's not messing with Prem's heat. That's why I put Prem at three and Ye at four. It's a very valid conversation. Let like me the ask debate you this. that we're oh, hold on. But let, let me say this. Like the debate that we're having, it's totally healthy. Because <laughs> a lot of people, no, 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 a lot of Prem fans don't understand this is a actual valid debate. And so even though I'm siding on Preem's side, I want people to understand you're saying a lot of valid stuff because these things are valid. He's right there with Preem. If you think that he's better than Preem, I don't agree. I'm not going to knock it because it's like, I, Mike, it's like when you told me that you thought ELE2 was better than King's Disease. It's like, well, I'm not going to argue with you. I had ELE2 at number five and King's Disease at four. I obviously thought they were comparable projects on some sort of level. I got a question for you. Um, and, you know, I wasn't just listening to, you know, to start talking again, but I had this question. I didn't want it to escape me. I know you're a big Prince fan, right? And um, and you talk about vested interests and working with people that are in your circle and your best production being for yourself and your best writing oh, being for yourself. So would you say the same argument for if someone said that Babyface was a better producer and writer than Prince? Because I would say in this argument, Kanye West would be Prince and Premier would be Babyface here. Mike, it would be a valid discussion and argument if we're just talking about producing. Are we talking about just the writing and production of a song? Yeah. Because yes, clearly Prince's val- best stuff is for himself. No, it's it, it's a very valid argument, Mike. Because uh, cause how about this? I find Babyface to be arguably like the best songwriter Mm-hmm. For other people, and possibly the history of music, though, and Prince is a genius and kept most of the genius for himself. And and I will say, Mike, and I'll say this right quick. Part of the reason why I think Sign of the Times is his best album is because his genius showed without a full band behind him. Like there was no Wendy and Lisa, there was no Revolution. Mm-hmm. You know, they did a lot of work with him. And so I get mm-hmm. what you're saying. And I would still tell you that I would think that it's a valid conversation and that Babyface would deserve maybe some credence and an edge. Because, Mike, if you were probably to pull up the hit records, Babyface has more. But mm. much like, how about this? But much like I feel about Preem, like I feel about Prince, oh, the quality of records, yeah. Like, Babyface not fucking with the quality of records, but he got the hits and better at doing it for other artists, yeah. Valid um, conversation if we're just talking production songwriting. If we're talking artists, ain't nobody fucking with Prince except Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson. These rappers didn't make Purple Rain. Mike keep trying to tell these niggas. Soul says Babyface is greater than Prince. Um, Curtis as a said- producer and a songwriter, as a producer <laughs> and a songwriter, if you were to tell me that, I'm, Mike, here's what I mean. You want to talk about versatility? Mike, he wrote Take a Bow for Madonna. And that went number one on the charts. Like, yeah, I mean, he can write a song for anybody. Yeah, Babyface so, got his favorite. He's body. great. Well, if you think that he's better than Prince as a producer and a songwriter, like he might be. He's not a better performer. He's not a better arranger or composer. Well, he's definitely Doesn't not make better, better albums. Artists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's not, the, he's not the total artist, but just in that production songwriting area, like, I mean, who I is mean, better he, than Babyface at that, Mike? I mean, since we just went to our, who is better than Babyface, Mike? Babyface I, wrote you know, the whole Wait Until Exhale soundtrack. I, mean. I was about to say, wait and tags hell, Mike. That's probably his crowning jewel because it literally says, "I can write a great classic song for anybody." Watch me do it. Anybody, yeah, anybody. Curtis Fan says, "No one is messing with Prince." LOL. You know what? I'm with Curtis on this one. I got as a producer. Hold on, Mike. As a producer and a songwriter, actually for other people, R. Kelly and Babyface is the more valid conversation. Because Prince really wasn't big on other people, period. But it's the and same R. thing. And R. Kelly's a nasty bastard who we shouldn't be mentioning in any way. But he's actually the comp for Babyface if we're talking about producing songwriting for other people at an extremely ridiculously high level. But it's, I think with R. Kelly, it's the same thing that you're talking about with Kanye. It's with people. I was actually saying that, there's yeah. a very valid comp yeah. between Kanye and R. Kelly in terms of but people around this? you because really he had no real vested interest in twister i know there were rumblings about 
Twister, you know, joining Rockefeller, but that never happened. Those hit records that he did for Twister, Overnight Celebrity and Slow Jams, he didn't get anything out of that as like, you know what I mean? Outside of just being the producer. I forgot about Overnight Celebrity. That yeah. Shit. yeah. I mean, and that's impressive too, because Twister, he changed Twister's whole image. Briefly, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, people forget Poe Pimp. Twister was already talking like that. It's just that at that time, the image matched what he was spitting, really, for the first time. I mean, sonically, he changed his whole, th- like, he brought him to a new audience. Same thing with Kyle. He brought him to a new audience, yeah. yes. Yeah, because people but didn't Twister really didn't, know. Twister didn't change yeah. that much. In term, I'm saying in terms of the subject matter content and how Twister was spitting, he didn't change that much, Mike. I didn't think like no. I didn't think it was like some sort of conscious effort for him to switch his flow. I think they just bought, like I said, they glossed him up. They made his mm-hmm. persona bigger. Yeah, they just shone a brighter light on who he really was. And yeah. I don't feel like they watered him down either. And that was that was no. one thing that Kanye was able to do uh, at that one point in his career, and kind of still now, he's able to keep you somewhat raw, but still open you up to a wider audience. And that was one of his gifts. <laughs> And that's why no, Mike. he he How made Talib's biggest record. Like no one thought Talib was gonna have a, a song on 106 and Park consistently, and then he did it with a song that wasn't even something that was supposed to be on those countdowns anyway. You know what I mean? Like he kept it real. Say, Talib. These, these songs that you're talking about are great, and I'm parsing. It, it, it's a thin line, but what I'm saying is, is that these songs that you're talking about that Ye produced. They're just not remembered in the annals of hip hop history the way preem tracks are. If you think he's better, that's fine. I just want you to understand that it's like those songs aren't rem- like like people don't remember get by the way they remember the evils, Mike. They don't. Not in the annals okay. of hip hop history, a classic hip hop song. Okay. No, they don't remember. Uh, what is it? What they don't remember? Uh, stand up the way they remember kicking the door. No, Another they don't. One the premier guy they that... don't remember. Hold on, hold on. They don't remember just the uh, what was the song? Uh, wouldn't get far with game. They don't remember that. The way they remember I gave you power, and so that's where I'm telling you, Primo is better. Is that like the shit that you really remember? Kanye's got versatility and stuff over the board. It's not as classic as Primo shit. This for the mm. culture, right? I guess like, that Primo's depends on who you ask, shit. man. Primo has made the classic shit that the culture is going to remember more. Song to song, beat to beat. I guess that depends Mike, on who you ask. Mathematics, <laughs> Mike, Mike. Most people who feel the way they feel about most deaf, Mike, mathematics is the track that they go to for the evidence. Tell me I'm wrong. I think Miss Fat Booty's there, too. But, yeah, no, I, I feel you. It's MC, one of them. No, People say that most deaf is the MC that Jay and Nas and Big are. Where do they go, Mike? They be like mathematics. Who did the track to mathematics, Mike? I, That's what I'm saying. So, so understand this about Primo too. And he is really the final straw. The best artists do some of their best stuff on his shit and consistently have done that. Kanye got some songs where it's like stand up ain't ludicrous is best shit. Wouldn't get far isn't game's best shit. The, but Other dreams guys, is uh, game's best shit. Let, let's not just pick around songs. Get, dreams is game's best shit. Come on you now. You think dreams is game's yeah. best shit? Dreams is one of game's best songs. Period. Oh, one of his best songs. Yes, but not Mike. I don't think you understand. What's all right? Well, name the game Mike. songs that are better than uh, dreams with just him. And I ain't talking about Ala Boom Baye with everybody in the world on it. Say Ali, okay, ass. I'm talking about just songs with him. Ooh, Mike, I, I told you, scream on him. I think that's Swiss's best track, actually. Scream on him. Nobody um, remembers that like they remember Dreams. Stop it. Come on now. Dreams got released as a single, so that's not fair. It's yeah, a reason I mean, why Dreams I got, got as a the whole story uh, is House when of Pain, House of Pain off of, House of Pain off of LAX comes to mind too. No nah, man, those songs ain't better than Dreams, right, and they're not. And like you said, they won't be remembered got like Dreams. Dreams got released. Dreams. How about this? Dreams is probably the greatest solo record the game has ever made. That's been released as a single. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mike. Okay. Did you not just hear me go? Hold on, Mike. You talking about the game? <laughs> I just bought up MC Act Like They Don't Know, and it's been a long time by KRS One and Rock M. I and- just bought up Nas is like. No, 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 no. I just bought up Nas is like. I just bought <laughs> yeah. up Boom. I just bought up the Sixth Sense. I just bought up Mathematics. You giving me dreams. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You know about. what? Because and I'm I gave giving you, five you or six, I'm I just giving gave you versatility. You five or six records better. 
I'm giving I just gave you five or six records better, but I gave you five or six records better. For every classic Kanye song, I can give you three <laughs> or four classic Prem joints. He hasn't made as many classics. And everybody that Prem's working with, with the exception of Royce on Boom and uh, Six Sense, is in New York. And what honestly, about those Snoop records we just went through? Though? We don't even. No one knows those. Like you said, you know what's going That's what. Like, you Come get on. to bring up Slum Village records, and I get to bring up Snoop records. Selfish was actually a, a hit. Stop it now. Selfish was not selfish. Yeah, yeah, selfish. The right. one with, with John Legend. Come on now. If you if you using selfish to make your Kanye argument, then I win. No, I'm just saying <laughs> you're you're bringing up a Snoop record that we no, that no, no one's ever even saying, really you heard like that. You guys work with other people. I keep trying to tell you now. Preem works on whoever calls. Is what I'm trying to tell you. And New York so only, only calls working, Prem, I guess. He's working on whoever calls. If Prem, if you call Prem, you're going to get a beat. I bet you plenty of niggas done called Ye and not got tracks. Go look at the catalog. Well, Ye is a superstar, so, I mean, it is what it is. Hey, but dude, he's a superstar. He's too good to give get cats like a, a group home a, a beat, an album of beats like Living Proof. That's what I'm saying. That's the difference, Mike. Those I mean, beats are all classic. Kanye don't know how to do that. Cream for the culture, Mike. We for the culture. You supposed to side with cream, like. I mean, you know, I'm, just, I'm siding with creativity, man, and uh, I don't he's, think he's Premier... more, he's more creative. Mike, creative doesn't mean better. We just watched that in the Super Bowl, didn't we? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Being more creative at your craft doesn't make you better, didn't we? Just watch that in the Super Bowl, didn't we? Just watch Patrick Mahomes be more creative and go home with another L. You he know lost what? Three playoff games. Hold on, he's lost three playoff games. He's lost them two times to a guy that is technically and more fundamentally sound when it matters. So and all that creativity and all that artistry, too. all that creativity and all that artistry may not deliver those final results. Is my point. Prem got final results that Kanye can't fuck with. Jock J brought up a great point. He said Prem works with MC8. He does. Um, he did. He did do work with MC8. Yeah, I think they just did a record together, a whole album. But um, they did a whole album. He did some joints. He actually did a couple of joints with MC8, I think, the year before. And they ended up working on the project together. And he works with uh, uh, Lady of Rage, too. I think one of those songs is the Snoop record I'm talking about, where it's Snoop and Lady of Rage on a primo track. Lucas like Ellis said, said Mike, you can't mention him, Kanye without him. mentioning Jay Dilla. I agree with that. Jay Dilla is, is the truth, and uh -oh. he is an amazing so I, producer. And that's going to get us into this top five. Hold Give on, us so the, let's top five, the top five. Oh, let's get into the top let's five. Let's get to the top Dilla five. Because Dilla didn't make the top five, but I wanted to talk about Dilla because I knew Katz was going to say this. So I want to say this now. Mm -hmm. Dilla just doesn't have the classic catalog of stuff that he's produced. You can't go to an album that Dilla executive produced and be like, oh, that's a classic. He kind of worked what? the way pre -work. Fantastic? No, no, no. Classic? Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Just, the original beat wise, one. it's a classic. Beat wise, it's a classic. Yeah, just no. Mike. How about this? I look at how about this, Mike. I look at Fantastic Voyage, Voyage a lot of the way that I look at um, Living Proof by a group, and it's like yeah, beat uh -uh. wise is stellar. I listen to beat Fantastic all the time, like for real. Like that album came oh, hey, out. Hey, you remember T? Hey, hey, Mike, you remember Toronto? T? Yeah, yeah. yeah T used to play that shit all the time, she but crazy? I still feel what I feel. <laughs> no, nah, man. That album came out okay, 20 so, so. years ago. I still listen to that album. Like, on, get this so, money, hold, hold tight. That hold tight remix with uh, Q-Tip on it, that shit yeah. is crazy. Yeah. No, I listen, that shit crazy. Uh, players, no, no, no. Okay, hold Climax. On. Hold on. Let's, um, stop. let's stop for a second. I don't know. Let's stop for a second. <laughs> no, let's stop for a second, Mike. Here's still why he didn't make the top five. Fantastic Voyage isn't messing with any of the classics we just talked about between Kanye and Primo. And they're three and four. So how is he going to be five? So even if you want to give him that classic, that's still not enough to break the top five. But here's what I will say what I realized when digging through this, Mike. There's something about beat for beat, Mike. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about the way you hear a beat, the way that it sounds when it comes on, and how it makes you feel, like refreshing to your ears, like, ah, like, damn, that shit dope as soon as you hear it. The only person fucking with Dilla is Dr. Dre in that regard, Mike. I think Dilla so, makes the best yeah. beats to rap to. Like, you know, if anybody out That's there rhymes or whatever, when you talk about putting on an instrumental... You could just throw on a bunch of Dilla's instrumentals that's, and oh, just that's, go. Oh, no, that's what I mean, Mike. Beat the beat. He's probably the best ever in terms of just aesthetically hearing a beat. 
and it sounding dope to you and wanting to rap to it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's Dilla. His catalog just doesn't compare to the other guys, but I wanted to give him some flowers and say that, that beat for beat, the only person that I hear beat for beat where you're just like, damn, is mm -hmm. Dr. Dre. And so as far as the technician and beat maker that he is, like nobody better than Dilla, I, fi I think that he is a better beat maker than Kanye and Primo. All right, well, we got two people here that I want to bring up that are brought up in the chat. Sean Johnson says uh, DJ Quick, and Theron Andre says uh, Timbo. Did any of them make your top five? No, Quick and Timbo didn't make my top five. Mm. Quick is rounded out the top ten. Timbo's outside of the top ten because I couldn't go to one classic <laughs> Timbaland-produced album. Not you, hip-hop. You don't, you don't think, you classic, don't think Missy's classic, Under Construction like, like, is a classic? I mean, I Okay, so let's get to a couple things with Timberland. First of all, most of his classic shit is on Aaliyah and Genuine's album, specifically Aaliyah's two albums. Missy? Come on now. I was about to get to the Missy stuff okay. in a second. Give me a second, Mike. Okay. The stuff that he did for Missy. Like, how about this, Mike? I didn't put him in my top ten because I didn't even know how to categorize or qualify what the fuck it is him and Missy pulled off. Because <laughs> it's not... I'm serious. <laughs> I'm dead-ass serious when I'm saying it. I feel like that about Future. I don't even know what the class of our Future is. It, like Mike, there, there, like, like, it, there's like some, like, if rap in R and B is a spear, there's Missy Timberland's spear, and whoever they pulled into the spear, Timberland was never really on no rap shit. Neither was Missy. They're hip hop artists, and they're when I say they're hip hop yeah. artists, they bought all elements to the culture together. There's right. no real rap album to speak of, and therefore, even though the stuff that he did was classic. Most of his classic stuff is with Justin Timberlake, Aaliyah, and Genuine. Outside of Missy, the stuff that he did with Missy was just next level, and it's hard to qualify it as some rap shit, Mike. It's uh well to me what what Timberland and Missy are they are the core of They're what hip hop entity. was in the eighties. Like what hip hop was in the eighties, yeah. where you had they the Fat Boys the and you had the Breaking, you had people that were still singing, like you know. Um, um, ah, dang, what was the name of that group? It slips me at the moment. But yeah, we well, was singing, rapping. Because back in the 80s, the early 80s, it was a lot of singing going on on these rap songs. I mean, it was a lot of singing, breaking, artists, dancing. Mike. So they bring all the elements together. So they, they are hip-hop. I think what you you're, I think where you have reservations at is the fact that bar for bar, you know, Missy wasn't on some, you know, rah, rah, rhyme this? shit. Mike, it was like having the fun. beats hold up, Mike, but you can't play like she's a bitch next to Ten Crank Commandments or Otis, and you know what I'm saying? Like, I it's understand so hard to what qualify. you're saying. I understand no, what you're saying. No, so it's not a knock the Timberland. If we're just talking about like overall producers in black music, Timberland would probably make the top five of that, in my opinion. I think he's better than the Neptunes. I always have, always preferred his beats to the Neptune. Outside of Hell Hath No Fury, so but but he didn't make it. I mean, so. We, uh, all right, uh, they're going in right now. Uh, Soul oh, says Timbo is a savage. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, Soul says Timbo is a savage on the boards. Lucas Ellis says Timbaland did some classic Jay-Z tracks. Deron Andre says uh, that dirt off your shoulders still, though. Uh, James Knight says Timbo was dope, but he can't fuck with other legendary producers. Uh, Jock J, Full Force. I think Full Force was who I was thinking about, but it was another group. But Full Force did some of what I was thinking about. Lucas uh, Ella says Big Pimpin, Timbo during the Rockefeller days don't count. That's what I mean, but y'all are only naming two or three songs versus guys that literally have a classic cat like like name the classic Timbo rap songs that aren't by Jay Z. Because Mike, I think Hey Poppy's a classic. I think Big Pimpin is a classic. I think Come and Get Me is a classic. I think Snoopy Track is a classic. What am I missing? Lobster and Scrimps. Is a classic. But see, uh, you know, and, and I understand what you're saying. It's all Jay. Dirt off your shoulders is a classic. Like it's all Jay. Who else did he give heat to that they made classic shit with? It's a rapper. And Name I think it. I think the Neptunes did a much better job at that because whenever Timberland, they did. whenever Timberland worked with uh, like the Locks or I Need a Ride or Die chick, it just sounded. It didn't come together. It was good. Right. It, was, it sounded formulated. Say. But like when Mike. the Neptunes made stuff, it sounded raw. Knock yourself out was hard. Grinding right. was hard. Uh, right. The Busta Rhymes stuff was hard. Like everything they made Super for Busta. Thug was hard. Super Thug was hard. What it is right now with Busta. As I come end. back with Busta. I've always liked the Neptunes more than Timberland. I, but I will give you this. I think that when it comes to just a beat machine 
and an individual in front of that, ain't nobody fucking with Timberland on the boards. And that's just the that's truth. what I mean. I think he's a better yeah. I think he's yeah. better than the Neptunes, but in the hip hop sphere, I give the Neptunes the advantage. Mike, you didn't even bring up some of the Neptunes best stuff, which yeah. is the stuff they did with Snoop. Drop it like it's hot and beautiful. Yeah. Right. I like the so, raw Neptune stuff. The stuff that they did for Fam Lay, like, you know, rock and roll and uh, for Fam Lay was hot. And <laughs> and here and here's another thing too, Mike, and I mean lest we not forget, didn't Timberland produce you owe me and you won't see me tonight by Nas? Like yeah. didn't he do that? But Nas Yeah, Mark doesn't... out of the top ten. Get out of the top ten. No, it, look, listen, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 you're out for producing those two records. See, you know what that, see now that's the Nas fan in you. We can't knock somebody because Nas can't catch their beats. Mike, those were career. Those were almost, <laughs> those were almost career enders, Mike. That's Nas's fault. Enders. I think if Jay had those same beats, those songs would have been dope. Hey, how about this? That's where I knew Nas was feeling some pressure from Jay. I'm like, why are you even taking that track? Anyway, because he's not in the he top made is that your chick for Jay, and Jay took that shit, you know, and killed it. Smashed it. He smashed is that your mm-hmm. chick. Um, All right, go to the top so, five. I know we ran out of time, so yeah, we on a little bit of a time constraint today. I got <laughs> I got Prem at three. I got Kanye at four. Now you want me to go to my one and Who's two? Or you five? Go to five? Who was five? Hey, Mike, you're gonna like this. <laughs> I got DJ Paul at five, Mike. What? I love it. I love it. I love it. I got DJ. Paul I'm interested at five. to hear how you got to DJ Paul being at five, but. I love it. Mike, when I went through it, I was trying to find the album that 3 6 hypnotized mine, like all the auxiliary and ancillary parts. I was trying to find the joints that he did where I was like, nah, Paul didn't smash. Like, I couldn't find this. Paul smashes every time he does the beat. And he still does and just, it. And I just couldn't knock it. And I think also, too, with this, Mike, and this is very important, I specifically have him in front of Alchemist and Havoc. And here's why. DJ Paul's sound still resonates throughout this entire region to this very day. This entire and culture. <laughs> hey, man, go, go go show me a DJ Paul. Go show me an album that it says DJ P- Paul executive produced it where you don't enjoy the production. Like. I mean, I think their seminal piece is uh, Mr. Don't Play, which just celebrated 20 years. The other day, I was about to go there, Mike. That's, Mr. Don't that's play. their purple tape. And, I think we've talked about tear, this before. That's that is their, their purple, purple tape. Yeah. Uh, tear the club up. The hip, um, and uh, what's the one with sipping on some scissor on it? Um, like 66 61 was cool. Oh, world domination, uh, world domination oh, is the one, not the production. yeah. World domination the is the one with tear the club up on it. 66 61 had um, um, uh, sipping on some scissor and um, and that stuff, but yeah, uh, tear the so club like, up was world domination. I think that's their seminal piece, honestly. I think that's their seminal piece as a group, but I feel, yeah. I feel the way that you feel about Mr. Don't Play. That's their purple tape. But, yeah. I mean, Paul's a beast, Mike, and when I just went started going beat for beat, I was like, Paul's the best producer that ever came out of the South. Ever. <laughs> I've always ever. Said, I've said that for a minute. Ever. Um, and A lot of people on, have put Manny on, Fresh on, in that this. And if this region has been in control of the music technically longer than any other region... And his sound is the sound that you can hear in other people who are hot today more than anybody else from yesteryear. Isn't that top five shit, Mike? And the fact that they actually originated crunk, but don't even fight to get credit for it. And they let the whole phase go and they're still here. You want to know why, why, Mike? Because DJ Paul is a great producer who can make any type of beat, really, if he wants to. He's a brilliant, great producer. When you hear a DJ Paul track, it thumps. Like, how about this? His sound, like beat, like sound-wise, is very comparable to Dre's sound. When you hear it, you're like, oh, that's Paul on his shit. Well, they're very N.W.A. influenced, clearly. I mean, especially when you look at the early stuff that 3-6 was doing. The early stuff, definitely. Um, The early stuff, definitely. Mike, the early stuff definitely sounds inspired by niggas for life, specifically. Yeah. Jock J asked a question that we were kind of combing over offline. He said, better than organized noise? Give me something outside Soul Food, Eat Points, Greatest Hits, or Southern Playalistic. I'm talking about Paul Dunn did work for... Man, I mean, Mike, you Mike, you know better than I do. Am I wrong? Is it a conversation no. even really when you look at the catalog? I'll say this. Like, you know, like I'm, fan, I'm fans noise, of, I'm fans of both of them. Organized noise, pieces. 
those two seminal pieces are better than anything that Paul has ever done. But then after that, Mike, ap- Mike, after those 30 songs on those two albums, yeah. it's DJ Paul in a landslide. Mike. I think the thing, uh, with, I think the thing with the two is the fact that, you know, you know, recently Goody Mob just dropped the album last year and Organized Noise produced the whole thing. And respectfully, I think, the production really fell Goody Mob on that one. And it was really mind boggling the fact that Organized did this whole thing. Um, I think, like you said, after Southern Playlistic and Soul Food, uh, they did a little bit on AT Aliens, but Outcast they started like doing three, a little they did bit like more. They three tracks, Mike. Yeah, yeah, they did like three yeah. or four Outcast records, started yeah. doing a little bit more. Um, Still Standing was good. It, to me, it wasn't Southern Playlistic or Soul Food. Uh, and we talk about Akuma and I, they did Skew It on the Barbie on there. They did Mama Cita and Return of Mama the Gangster. Mama was hard. Yeah, it was. And they did Return of the Gangster, but then Outkast pretty much did the rest of it. So we saw with their two biggest acts, it was like their production wasn't being relied upon as much. Now, as far as DJ Paul goes... They were producing, he was producing everything. Him and Juicy J or whatever, if you want to say DJ Paul, Juicy J, whatever. They were producing everything, and then they got a sound that that they kind of started that's still going today. And so, I mean, even if we want to talk about that, um, I think it was like a rehash of the 3-6 Mafia. It was the, uh, the Mafia 6, when Juicy J started doing his thing. Yeah. And basically, DJ Paul brought back all the members outside of Juicy J, and they made that um, that project. The beats on there are hard, and it's not. And Mike, I'm sitting here looking like on, Mike. You put me. I don't know if you remember. You put me on to that. You, I called you one day, and you were like, "Yo, I'm gonna hit you back." I'm listening to you. Were like this shit hard. I gotta go. This shit hard, man. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yo, I was like, I'm about to go listen right now. Mike, don't never get off the phone with me like. That. And the thing that's so crazy about what DJ Paul and them were doing, you could tell that they were really working with nothing in the beginning. And each time that they got more equipment, you could hear it. And I feel like over time, they got better. And I feel like over time, Organized Noise kind of, you know what I'm saying, like they, they kind of were going the after other direction. I mean, I mean, after 99, I'd say from about 90, how about this, Mike, from 94 to 99, Organized Noise was better. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's not hold even on, a question. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Three six was there first. Yeah. For one, and 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 there after, and mostly because of the sound DJ Paul cultivated, and it and it's important to the region. And so let me speak to this. I had Alchemist and Havoc right after him, mm-hmm. and here's why they didn't make it. First of all, I moved Alchemist up because I felt like he had an executive produced anything that could consider to be a classic until last year with Alfredo. Okay. I want to see how Alfredo ages. I want to see how Boldy James is the price of tea in China ages. Those are his two best executive production jobs. Mm. They're also fresh still. So right. let's see how they hold up. But one thing else that I realized too, and here's why I moved Havoc up, and a lot of people don't know this, like Mob Deep's first three albums are classic. Havoc's beats have as much to do with it as Prodigy's rhymes. And when you listen to the sound that Griselda has bought back via Alchemist, who is a protege of Havoc specifically and directly learned from him and under mm-hmm. him and then worked with him. Like it turned into like, you know, uh, it turned into kind of like their their relationship uh, production producer wise kind of turned into what Jay and Beans turned into where it was, this is my protege. Then your protege standing next to you going like yeah. making heat like you were making and going toe to toe with you. And it's a different situation. And so that happened. Havoc doesn't get enough credit for the sound that's coming out of New York right now. That's I Havoc guess. sound. That's uh, Havoc I wanna, sound. I want to address people, specifically, Mike, when you're hearing Griselda, like I didn't realize it because like when I listened to Juvenile Hell off from a king to a god and I'm thinking like, like this is where Beat Butcher and Derringer and Alchemist are getting this oh, eerie sound from. Oh, definitely. Like straight from Havoc. And so the sound that's dominating the, so the sound that people are saying that is bringing New York hip hop back, oh, that's Havoc sound. Sean Johnson says, um, um, y'all still it's just miss- bigger than DJ Paul's because DJ Paul's sound is a region. Havoc yeah. sound New York, and so. Right there, though. Sean Johnson says we're missing beats by the pound. I want to address that in a second, but I want I want to sit here and say this to you. Um, 
with that being Man. said, where 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 do you consider Q Tip? Um, you know, because he did a lot for the group. Uh, he dropped. I mean, he produced like what three classics in a row with um, People's Instinctive, Low End Theory, and Midnight Marauders. Um, I mean, the Low End Theory and Midnight Marauders. Yes, People's Instinctive is the first album to ever get five mics in the source. So I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, saying all that to say, I would say that the Q Tip actually created a subgenre with that whole you know jazz hip hop fusion. And that's something that a lot of people were able to jump on and keep going. And not to mention that he kept, you know, his production going. Not to mention that he basically was what you said about, you know, the mentee to a Jay Dilla. And he gave so us I the Kanye's. He so gave I, us so. the Pharrell's. And so, uh, I mean, do you consider those things when, you know, with, with Q-Tip involved? I consider Tip and Large Professor in that regard. Um, I'm going to tell you specifically with Q-Tip and Large Professor, I just think Dilla's just a superior beat maker and they're in the same vein. And it was just hard to get Q-Tip in there and have Dilla in there too because Dilla does what Q-Tip... I mean, Q-Tip will tell you, Dilla does what I do except for he does it better. But Dilla has Q-tip not produced... Tell you that. But Dilla hasn't produced the low end theory. Yeah, he didn't. He true. did Mike Mike and Flowers for the Low End Theory. It's a top ten hip hop album. Yeah. Um, and production had, is a big reason why. I mean, if we're talking about specifically how I had it listed, Q Tip is the second person outside of my top ten. I had him at twelve. Oh my! I don't. God. <laughs> I did because here's the. I didn't know how to qualify it because I put Pete Rock in. Like like some of these guys do some of the same things, you know. I, I just do felt, think I, that. I, I love Pete Rock's drums. I think that Pete Rock's big sound makes him makes him stand alone to me. When you listen to Trouble T. Roy and how that shit comes in and comes through the speakers, it just sounds different. It's just one like I told you about um, you know, the Dre stuff, the Dr. Dre stuff, it just hits different. It hits different. And, Right. Trouble T. Roy and really Pete Rock stuff. Period. Because I what what's the song uh, with Corrupt and um, and Inspect the Deck? Um, 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 shit with the with the on the Soul Survivor. Yeah, that yeah. that beat is crazy. All those beats are crazy. All those beats are crazy. The Home Alone so, sample for uh, the game so, with uh, so, with Prodigy, so Ghostface, and Ray. Well, here's how Pete Rock ended in, and Q-Tip didn't, is because of stuff that you thought about, is talking about, like, Q-Tip has the classic stuff because he has the classic tribe stuff to go to, but mm-hmm. you can't, but you can't hear, like, Mike, Pete Rock's stuff is better than the beats on Q-Tip's best shit, and I just couldn't ignore that. Like, when mm. he's at his best, he's better than Q-Tip. The world is yours, Trouble, Trouble T-Roy. I'm it's not mad long, at that. I'm not mad at that, I mean, but I don't think that... Mike. I was actually about to say, Mike, the best joint on the 18th letter by Rock M is actually The Saga Begins, Mike. That beat is crazy, Mike. Thank when you, Pete James Rock Knight. True it. Master. True Master is the name of the song. I'm True Master. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that beat bananas. is fucking bananas. That yeah. beat, that's what I'm saying. When when So Pete Rock has worked the least, which is why he fell further back, because beat-wise making, he's him and Dilla are better beat makers than somebody like an alchemist or Kanye or Primo, I but think, they just yeah. haven't worked as much. They just haven't worked as much. Those guys are in there because when they show out and perform, it's just better than their contemporary, specifically large professor in Q tip. So I, like I chose me- Pete Rock. Yeah. So hold on. Listen, I chose Pete Rock and Dilla over Q tip and large professor. That's I like, pretty much what I'm telling you. I got you. I like Pete Rock's beats more than I like Premier's beats. And again, I'm sure we've said this on three other shows. I was floored when I found out that he produced Brutus. I mean, geez. okay, okay. I say something about the Pete Rock Primo thing. <laughs> yeah. And, and and this is kind of leaning more towards Prem. And here's what I noticed from looking at Pete Rock's catalog. The reason that Pete Rock doesn't get the flowers that Prem has gotten is about the work, Mike. The years where Prem was becoming a legend, Pete Rock was still just doing a track here or there. There, there are years where Prem's doing 20, 30, 40 tracks. And Pete Rock's only doing four or five beats. And so it's not that the tracks aren't great. It's just that when you're talking about those placements, I don't know how that situation was working. Mm-hmm. But the premium is everywhere. Pete Rock isn't. And so I'm going to go to work ethic right quick. And I'm not saying this in a bad way. I'm saying 
Pete Rock might be more of a technician at making a beat than somebody like a Prem. Meaning where Prem is going to make three beats in the same amount of time it's taking Pete Rock to make one. Now that Pete Rock, one Pete Rock joint, oh, it might sound better than two of those Primo joints for certain, but Primo's probably going to make something on that third joint that's comparable. And when you start pacing that out over a course of time, what you're going to have is somebody who does three tracks on Illmatic versus somebody who does one. Okay. Kevin Bring, um, Kevin Bingham says, can we get the top five? Go ahead. Give your top five. I mean, so at five, we got DJ Paul. At uh-huh. four, we got Kanye. At three, we got Primo. At number two, Mike, I got the RZA. I want to talk about RZA for a minute, too, because RZA was actually somebody, even though I'm a big Wu-Tang fan, in my mind, I had him rounding out this top five, as in, it's probably going to be fourth or fifth and not Mm -hmm. certain of it. But, Mike, when I went to it, I actually thought he's actually closer to being the greatest hip-hop producer of all time than he is, like, being four or five on the list. And let me tell you why. Go for it. You already know why. Let's go to the albums that he is executive produced, and he is a rapper too. None of which he's rapping on these albums, but he's not the he's not the main MC, and it's comparable to Dr. Dre. And so we're gonna go to it. Except for he write his Enter- bars. I'm not touching that yet. Okay. Enter the Wu Tang, Mike. Wu Tang forever. Mm-hmm. Only built for Cuban links. Liquid Swords. Iron Man. Supreme clientele. Jeez. Mike, with the, Mike, with the exception, Mike, with the exception of Supreme Clientele, I don't think people understand this. He did almost every single beat on those hip hop classic albums that I'm naming, with the exception of about four songs. Mike, yeah. True Master did the MGM on Wu Tang Forever. He did Brooklyn Zoo on Return to the 36 Chambers, Mike. Yeah. If you include Return to the 36 Chambers in this argument, which I think is a great album, but not a classic album. Great album. Great album. Not a classic, favorites? but a great album. Yeah. So, so Mike, he, that means he has been the executive producer of six hip-hop classics. And the only other producer that can say that that actually produced those number of albums is Dr. Dre. And here's what I mean about it being barely, Mike. I bought up the fact if you take the Chronic and the Chronic 2001 out, Dr. Dre's solo albums, Mike, mm-hmm. it's actually RZA, and that's what I mean about how close he is. Dr. Hey, Dre's RZA solo did more album, work. RZA did more work, hands-on work than Dr. Dre did on a Get Rich or Die Trying or All Eyes on mm-hmm. Me or right uh documentary that's what i mean when i'm saying it's closer mike than people are realizing dre's a better beat maker and dre's got the classics but mike even is he with a the better beat stuff, maker i think dre's a better producer i think riz is a better, he's a better beat maker. producer he might not be he's not a better yeah, beat maker because uh, is a better producer. dr dre ain't got an ice cream in his in his uh but, beat mike, arsenal. Look, but mike you want to talk about something here's what i realize it's like oh riz is better than preem and it's not a conversation mike all the singles released off these classic albums, except for Supreme Clientele, RZA produced all the singles too, except for Brooklyn Zoo. Let's yeah. go to the list of shimmy, singles shimmy. produced from these albums, Mike. Which is like, like these songs are all classic hip hop songs that got released as singles. Let's start at the top: Cream, mm-hmm. Ice Cream. Mm-hmm. Can it be all so simple? All I got is you. Bring the pain, mm. criminology, incarcerated scar faces, glaciers of ice. The original version of I'll Be There For You, the Razor Sharp mix was on the cassette that, yeah. that went platinum. People forget RZA produced the original version, and yeah. that version still got put on the main version, on the radio version, on the flip side. I actually like that right. version better. I think the beat's better, Mike. Me I just too. don't like the, I like the, I like the way the hook, I like the Biggie sample better, but the beat is better. on the. I other. like the original Mike. one because the hook sounded so much more eerie on there. It did. It sounded eerie. Yeah. Hi, shimmy shimmy ya. Triumph, it's yours. Daytona yeah. 500. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Protect your neck. The mystery of chess box and heaven and hell. These were singles. These yeah. are all classics. Mike, did I name one rap song that's not a classic? No. The only knock that I would have on RZA is the fact that you know it's kind of like in a time period. But for that time period, that stuff is really tough to uh, to no, to Mike, refute. It's the best Because you didn't even ever. mention Mike, shadow boxing. Mike, 
You didn't even mention Mike, Shadow Mike, Boxer. No, Mike, right Mike, we getting it, Mike. No, no, no. I'm not finished, Mike. You didn't let me finish. At the <laughs> next set of list of songs, I had at the box top. Guess what? Shadow Boxing. Okay. Mike, Iron Maiden, yeah. Verbal Intercourse. Mike, Guillotine, Winter Wars, Scary Hours, Bells of War, Living in the World Today. Yeah. Mike, Long Kiss Goodnight off of Life After Death is produced by The Risen. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I was, I was, I'm, I'm not to sound controversial. I was kind of underwhelmed by that. Oh, uh, um, Mike, so. I was, about to, I was actually about to say, Mike, a lot of cats enjoy uh, Long Kiss Goodnight the way they enjoy kicking the door. Because. I guess because you're nobody to somebody kills you and downfall was just right there. I, so the, like, I mean, you know. the, that's like I said, between those three songs, which is the best into a rap album ever, mm -hmm. like my downfall and you're nobody till somebody's killed. Mike, that's just some of the best rap shit ever. So I agree. Um, um, Kevin but, says uh, that uh, Only Built for Cuban Links is the best solo Wu-Tang album. I think it's the best Wu-Tang yes. album, period. If we were to count all of the Wu-Tang albums. Oh, God, best solo best album ever made. Uh, Clinton Calloway Jr. says Premier killed him on the verses. I disagree. I think RZA murdered Premier on the verses. But, you know, I guess to each his own. I mean, RZA's sound was fucked up. He was you. dealing with the sound handicap. Uh, Premier was telling him that he was sounding good when he was sounding awful. And he still won. Yeah. Go so, ahead. That's how I felt. So that's how I felt about RZA. It's just like, like Mike, just those songs, those singles, those albums, like that. Mike, that's it. That's better. Mike, think about this. Cream and Kanye have been working, have done more work, and their catalog still ain't better. Now you know what I will give you that, man. I, I you know, I, I'm vouching for Kanye, and you know, I know I'm arguing against Cream, but I love Cream too. But that stuff you just named for RZA. That shit is something. Else. Neither you one didn't of them even name with that mic when I when I listed it out. I was like, "Oh, Premium Ye ain't fucking with you." Bitch. Ain't even mentioned Fourth Chamber. Like these Mike, beats are crazy. Mike, there are plenty of joints. Mike, Two Sixty, Assassination Day, mm. uh, Box in Hand, uh, Snakes off of Return to the Thirty Six Chamber. Mike, uh, Tragedy off the Rhyme and Reason soundtrack. Um, <laughs> the stuff he did for Grave Diggers, Mike. Like pfft. he did Buck Fifty remember, on remember uh, Supreme Diggers, Clientel. Remember, well, well yeah. since, since we're going to talk about Grave Diggers, though, man, I mean, I still, and I will always stand with this, I think the most underrated producer in hip-hop is Prince Paul. He did a lot of that Grave Digger stuff. I think Prince I think Prince Paul and DJ Quick probably would share that moniker. Yeah, equally. people keep asking about Quick and where you got Quick. Is he outside of your top 10? No, Quick is literally at 10. Okay. Okay. I got Quick at 10. I love Quick. I love Quick's beats. Yeah. I actually sometimes prefer when I want to hear some West Coast shit, Mike. Sometimes I prefer to hear Quick over Dre just because with Dre comes all the gangster shit. Quick is just gonna give you some West Coast shit, just funky sometimes for you, you know. Yeah. Quick yeah. is, uh, but I do have Dr. Dre at number one, Mike. All right, and he and here is why. It, and I realize it, it's like Riz would be at number one if it's not for the Chronic and the Chronic 2001 because here are Dre's classics, and it's just hard to ignore the lineup. Mm -hmm. Straight out of Compton, niggas for life. Yeah, the Chronic, Doggy Style, 2001, Get Rich or Die Trying, and the documentary, Mike. But if you actually take the Chronic and Chronic 2001 out, is executive producer. So it actually has an executive producer of artists. Riz is actually even better than Dre at it because he's made more classic albums where yeah. he wasn't at the forefront than Dre. But it's you know just, what? You, you know what I find interesting though, and I know you were holding it against Kanye, but these guys, RZA in particular, pretty much just works within his camp. And honestly, Dre does the same thing. You know, Dre wasn't out there enlistening his services in ways that Premier, Kanye, and all of them do. Uh, all his greatness is within his camp. So why why doesn't why don't they get knocked for that? I want to say something about RZA right quick. If you want to knock him for something, here's what you should knock him for. Well, ain't nobody got a Raekwon and Ghostface and Method Man at their disposal right. and the Jizza. And that's why the MC and Mike, this is why I told you like Primo versus Kanye came down to, well, what did the MC do on the beat? Mm -hmm. Well, on Primo's beats, they did greater. And that's how I took it. Part of why RZA shit is so great, those tracks that I listed, Mike, almost all those songs that I named got either Raekwon, Ghostface, or Method Man on them in some sort of shape, form, or fashion. Mike, specifically, Mike, all these songs that I named, hold on, let me see. And they age Mike, the so well. Song, Mike, Mike, the only song that I named 
from old singles that doesn't have Ray Ghost or Method Man on them is Shimmy Shimmy Ya. Mm -hmm. So there's something to having the great MC rhyming on your shit. Meth, Ghost, and Ray are on all those records. And you know, if we're it's talking about long-lasting impressions or whatnot, most of those Wu-Tang um, records that you name, they have been done over by somebody else at some other point where somebody had recycled that sample because, I mean, everything from Wu-Tang Clan that can fuck with, Bring the Pain, I know Missy did that over. Uh, Alicia Keys did over um, that Brooklyn Zoo, even though he didn't do Brooklyn Zoo, but just that whole movement had such an impression on people that it was always being recycled. Uh, Sean Johnson wants to know, uh, what was I going to say about Beats by the Pound? Okay, what I was going to say about DJ Paul and him being over the Manny Freshes, the Beats by the Pound, and Organized Noise is the fact that he actually got better and stronger over the years where the rest of them went the other direction. And I don't think the Beats by the Pound's production aged that well. It's not um, held up. You know, it hasn't held up in the way that DJ Paul's production has held up. Honestly, I don't even think outside of Back That Ass Up, the Manny Fresh production has really held up in in a great way. Uh, and like we said, outside Solid. of those... huh? Solid. It's solid. Manny's production is held up solid. Solid. But I think that, you know, what we're hearing from Metro Boom and what we're hearing from Mike Will May and all yeah, that stuff, DJ it's Paul. very DJ Paul. Influ very and DJ it Paul. sounds fresh. It doesn't even sound like somebody's trying to rehash an era or something. Like, you know, I felt like that with Big Crit, man. When Big Crit was coming through, I felt like he was trying to rehash an outcast, 8-Ball, MJG, UGK era. And it didn't sound super fresh to me i didn't knock the people who weren't as aware of that stuff and it sounded fresh to them but for me i really couldn't get into it because of that yeah no you're right yeah. so we're gonna um run down some of dre's best stuff because okay, here's what i mean it's closer than you think when i even ran down dre's best stuff i'm like i don't even know for certain that these list of songs are better than the RZA songs we just named, but I'm going to list some of them. Mm -hmm. Nothing But a G Thing, Let Me Ride, Dre Day, Express Yourself, Straight Out of Compton, Gin and Juice, What's My Name, Still Dre, Next Episode, Explosive, Phone Tap, In the Club, How We Do, Hello, The Way I Am, Three Kings, The Watcher, Lil Ghetto Boy, The Shiznit, Personal Favorite, Mike Natural Born Killers, mm. Appetite for Destruction Off Niggas for Life, Hustlers Off Hip Hop is Dead, The Nas and Game Joint. So when I listened to those, listed those tracks, I'm like, man, like, it's closer than people think. Those songs aren't necessarily better than the Wu-Tang songs I just named, Mike. It's not. And, and so then the other really thing that you got to deal with with Dre is the fact that there's so many discrepancies of like, okay, Daz made this, Warren G found this, or whatever. You don't really have that with RZA as much. I think with Dre, it's like, what comes through the speakers is undeniable. Uh, and I think that's more so on an album level, more so than a single level with Dre. Well, Mike, well, here's the thing. If you notice, I left All Eyes on Me off of here because of that, because yeah. he really didn't do too many beats on All Eyes on he Me. He didn't do anything. Did he do um, the song with George Clinton, You Can't See Me? I mean, he did two beats on there. He did the California Just like, Love. So, so he gets executive production credit for Good Kid, Mad City, and All Eyes on Me, but I didn't count those because he really didn't do anything for those projects, mm. in my opinion. I feel like when I listen to All Eyes on Me, it feels like Daz executive produced it. More. Well, from what I understand, what Daz probably did do a lot of production on there. But as far as engineering, DJ Quick did a lot on there. DJ Quick was more hands-on uh, on that See, project than Dre was. See, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, so Straight out of Compton, Niggas for Life, The Chronic, Doggy Style, 2001, Get Richard Die Trying, Marshall Mathers LP, The Documentary. Now, 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 let's it's talk just, about that, too. How much of the stuff, how involved do you think Dr. Dre production-wise really was with Eminem stuff? Because it's not like he has some great seminal production on Eminem's tracks. So, I'll tell you this, and here's what I mean when I keep saying it's closer than I realize. Mm -hmm. He definitely had his hands all over five of these projects for certain, and that's straight out of Compton, Niggas for Life, the Chronic, 2001, and Doggy Style. So yeah. that's five classics that I know he had his hands all over. Now, remember I told you, he had his hands all over five classics, too, and kind of took the helm for the sixth one, which is Supreme Clientele. Mm -hmm. He's kind of at the helm 
of Get Rich or Die Trying, the documentary, and the Marshall Mathers LP. And yeah. that's where I gave him the slight advantage. It's like, oh, you didn't work, work, work like that. But RZA got a project like that, too, where you can feel the executive production effect of RZA and that supreme clientele. Mm -hmm. And you can feel Dre on Get Rich or Die Trying in the documentary specifically. So even for those of you like you who don't feel like Marshall Mathers LP is a classic, it's still two to one on that uh, executive produced but not hands on classic. And that's what I mean. It's closer than people think. I got you. You know what? Let me go ahead and say this since we have rounded out the top five. I know we're about to get up out of here in a minute. Uh, everybody in the room, make sure y'all go on to uh, YouTube and subscribe to According to Hip Hop's YouTube page because we got a whole bunch more of these discussions. If you've missed some of the ones in the past, you know, I know everybody asks, like, where can I get the old episodes uh, or the episodes from last week or two weeks ago? We got everything on YouTube. So, yeah, make sure you subscribe. And we're going to start going live on there, too. And, you know, Coop, he got this uh, top five show going on that, um, you know, you guys can catch up on, too. So uh, that's on our YouTube page. So just go to According, the number two hip hop, and subscribe uh, to the YouTube page. Um, you said five was DJ Paul and Quick. Who was somebody? Or Kanye. That, yeah. Yeah. So I who mean, you was somebody we're out? missing that everybody keeps asking about? Um, you already addressed the. Um, you already addressed Large Professor. I got Alchemist Havoc, Pete Rock. Mm -hmm. Dilla, DJ Quick. Okay. Um, any new producers that you think could be creeping in that? And um, what do you I think would need to happen? I don't want none of the young heads to take this personally. I hear a lot of great young producers that are building out their catalog right now. The way the game goes right now, it's more song than I think the person that's going to show themselves is going to be the person the executive produces the project that we're going to remember. So there's about five or six or seven guys right now that I'm looking at, and I'm just waiting to see who's going to show themselves the way RZA showed himself, the way Hit Dre Boy showed himself. Hit Boy keeps getting these opportunities. Hit Boy got the opportunity to produce Nas's project. He got the opportunity to produce Benny's project. And for me, I think that, you know... Oh, put some nice notches in the belt, Mike, but beat-wise, he doesn't line up with anybody that just made our top 10. He does so. not. He does not. I think that... If we're talking on a talent level, I've said this before offline, I believe. I think Metro Boomin could possibly be the Timberland of this generation. Um, he doesn't hey, really Metro's work with very lyrically strong MCs, but I love the the uh, chemistry that him and 21 have. Hey, Mike, Metro's the guy that, that I'm looking at the most, if you really want to know. Mm. I would like it to be Metro, because I, I like think he be can. Too. I think he's the guy that can take the hint of a whole project. Like, how about this? Like, I know he sounds good with Savage. I would love him to hear hear him executive produce uh, Lil Baby's next album with some tracks from Wheezy, like with Wheezy kind of there with him, too. Yeah. Metro, I want, I want Metro and Wheezy to do Lil Baby's next album, like me personally. What do you like, think? I would love that. But I want Metro at the front of the boards. You know what I'm saying? What do you like, think I want about Kendrick's production? Uh -huh. what, what do you think about Kendrick's production? It's solid. It's good. It's nothing. He does saying. what works for him. He does what works yeah. for him. Yeah. And so he's a smart. He's a, he's an intelligent beat picker, just like he's an intelligent lyricist. Uh, yeah, I think that right now the best beat picker in the game is definitely West Side Gun. Um, yeah. And you know, I mean, when, when Ross Pete's pick, picks a beat, it's still you know is what it is. But West Side's just been doing so much work. Oh, I, Mike. Oh, here's another thing. You know, uh, Alchemist produced Elizabeth off Supreme Lionel. Mm, mm. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. I didn't know that. That don't sound like Al. What people need to understand before we get out of here, 2020 was an incredible year for hip hop, and especially since uh, we're almost at the end of February and we really haven't even gotten anything new in 2021. So what Cooper and myself did, we went ahead with all the dialogue that we've been doing over the past year. We went ahead and put that thing in one book. So we made basically hip hop's first yearbook. So the 2020 yearbook. And it's available now on Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, link in the bio. But basically, we were able to encapsulate everything happen that happened in the year 2020, hip-hop-wise, socially, and put it all in one book. Uh, we got some of the... I know you were doing some rankings on there as well. Let me go ahead and put this uh, this link yeah, to it. Yeah, you know, um, 
there's uh, all of my lists that people have been arguing with me about the past year that we've been doing this podcast because we're approaching a year doing this podcast, Mike, and we've only taken a couple shows off. So we've yeah. we've logged about 40 some odd shows and um, pretty much it's just a compilation of all the things that we talked about last year. So we have the top 20 uh, albums of the year, mm-hmm. we have the top 20 verses of the year, we have the top 20 slept on projects of the year, we have the top 20 songs of the year. And it was a, it, it was fun. It was also something that was ever changing because last year was one of the greatest hip hop years ever. And my Mike, you know this. I was like, man, yeah. I was like, I gotta bump this person. Da, 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 da. I gotta bump this one. Like, I'll just tell all all the fans right quick. Like, um, yeah, I put Lil Uzi and Future's project uh, up, and it ended up making me push Gunna's project back because I thought Lil Uzi and Future made a better album as comparable sounds and styles that I was hearing on the project. And so it was something that was ever changing and that we were literally working on week to week and like super excited and happy. And uh, we really just wanted to offer something for the culture. We're going to do one every year. We got other things coming, but it's really like a good time piece. You know, we want to document it. We want uh, everybody that started to follow us, support us to be able to back on it as a time piece, you know, and we're trying to class we trying to classy this shit up a little bit. Like, you know, it's hip hop coffee table book. Like, you know, we're grown men. Hip hop has grown into a grown up genre. And we just wanted to reflect that in the culture, too. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we wanted to document. Oh, go ahead. My bad. We wanted to just document, <laughs> document history as it was going on, because in the digital age, you know, things happen like two months ago and you just forget what happened, you know. And so what we were able to do basically through all the discussions that happened on the court in the hip hop and just go through everything from month to month and highlight the most uh, talked about and the most documented things as it happens. So, you know, being able to have yeah. a timepiece and document history as it goes along in print in a way where people can't just go on the Wikipedia and delete it or uh, edit it and tell you that something yeah. else happened in 2020 that really didn't happen in 2020. So you got hey, physical you evidence, want- you know? And you want to know what? This is fun for our fans, like, and the people following and watching. It'll give you opportunity to call out on our shit, too. Like, I'm going to tell you something that I realized. I ranked uh, A Price of Tea of China uh, right ahead of the Lox's album, mm. the Living Off Experience album. I'm like, man, that Lox album is holding up really well. Like, damn, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> you know? That, so, you, you know, know you what? Can come it, up here and give me smoke. You can come up here and give me smoke after you cop the yearbook too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you know we're kind of putting our feet to the fire with it too. It's like you know we talk all the time about how many times the source messes up. And Mike, I don't agree with you. Like people's instinctive shouldn't have got five mics in my opinion. So and it's you one know, of those and things I think that we're if doing. They do it it again, gives people the opportunity to debate. If they could know? do it again, they probably wouldn't have given it five mics. But that's the thing, like. You, yeah. you know, and that's the exciting thing about doing album reviews. I know you do album reviews and done a lot of great ones for us. And you're taking a risk whenever you give something a really good rating and sometimes a bad rating. Like the source gave Doggy Style four mics. I bet they wish they could take that back, but you can't. But that's no. that's the part that's history. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes hey, you get hey, it right, sometimes you don't. Hey. Hey, Mike, when I read my Nasir review, sometimes I'm like, what the fuck was I on? When I'm just like, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It it, what before we get out of here, we were talking about reviews, man. I read the the uh, Illmatic review. And, you know, Illmatic is Illmatic. It's so short. And, so, like, it's not even elaborate or anything. It's basically it like, like, this is a great like, album. Like, hold on, like, I remember it. It's like... <laughs> Uh, Life's a Bitch is lyrically the best song ever. Memory Lane might be the best shit I've ever heard. And, yeah. like, this is a certified classic. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> you know who wrote that? Miss Info. Uh, huh? Yeah, Miss Info wrote that review. Yeah, Miss Info. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Under I mean, another she, name. No, no, I mean, she was right. I remember when I heard Memory Lane, I'm like, no, 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 she's right. This is probably some, like, might be the best rap song, just like bar for bar. Ever. No, she was spot on about her review. It was just brief. She said she was uh, leaving the office, um, you know, had a Walkman, put the tape in, got on the train, and was like, couldn't stop listening to it. And, you know, any, I don't know where she was living, maybe like Queens, Brooklyn, whatever, but a, a trip from Midtown Manhattan to Queens, New York, or wherever you're going, you probably listen to that album like two or three times just in your commute. So... Good Everybody stuff. had Illmatic, Mike. Like my, my older brother Ranares used to tell me because I was in Charlotte, but he used to tell me he's like niggas down here in the hood, down here was riding around to Illmatic all the time. Mm. Like South Side, North Side, up in the crack in the A. Yeah, yeah, great album, great music's great music, 
And uh, we will see y'all next week. We're going to do Friday next week. Uh, it won't be a yeah. Sunday, but we appreciate everybody hollering at us on Sunday. And definitely go to the YouTube page, subscribe, and go to that link at Amazon and check out the um, the yearbook. Um, Amazon Prime, I had that thing delivered to you the next day. And we appreciate everything. And I'm going to holler at you next week, sir. Salute. Yes, sir.